a model steamboat named Edith. This one's part 11, repairing the hull. The bow of this boat is quite badly damaged as you can see, it's come loose and sprung apart. Originally this part of the bow was soldered together but it's just given way over the years and this is a bit of a problem because I can't re-solder it for a couple of reasons, the main one being of course that the paint will be removed by the heating process and the other reason is it's not a good idea to put any heat into a thing like this because the heat will make the plates move about and that could cause many more problems. There has been an attempt to repair this in the past using some filler which wasn't very well done and it wasn't successful, so I've dug out all of the filler, every trace of it. So now at least I have some clean metal surfaces that I can stick back together. A shape like this is quite difficult to clamp, and besides it wouldn't be permanent. The combing around the top edge of the hull, the part that's painted brown, is made from brass. And the main support for the bow is also made of brass. So using my Minicraft drill, I'm attempting to drill a hole through the side of the combing. But it's not working, it's really difficult to drill through it, that's because the Minicraft drill goes too fast. So I use my Makita drill, which is a standard battery operated drill, which goes a bit slower and it's more powerful anyway, so then I had no problems. I'm drilling a hole through the side of the combing, which is going to be clearance size for 8BA. I've now changed the drill bit for a smaller drill bit, which is tapping size for 8BA. And I'm drilling through into the round brass bar that forms the front of the bow. And once I'd done this, I then threaded the round brass bar using an 8BA tap, being very careful not to break it off. You will notice at this stage of the operation that I'm tightly holding the bow in position. That way the 8BA tap enters the hole at the correct angle. All I have to do now is just screw in an 8BA bolt. This is a stainless steel 8BA countersunk bolt. Why countersunk? Well, no reason, I've just got plenty of these and they're quite strong. The bolt was too long so I took it out to shorten it and I thought what I'll do first is just clean up the work area and get rid of all traces of the old filler plus the brass particles from the drilling operation. And now it's time to mix up some JB Weld. I use this stuff a lot, it's really really good stuff to use, despite what anyone may think, it's a very good epoxy resin. Here I'm mixing the two parts together thoroughly until I get a grey mixture, which when it sets after 24 hours will really bond the front part of this hull together. At this stage obviously I haven't fitted the bolt, what I'm going to do is fill the gap with JB Weld and then tighten the bolt whilst holding the front of the bow together and this in turn will squeeze out some of the JB Weld. The plan is that the JB Weld in the damaged part of this bow will hold it together forever. I'm giving this bow area quite a good coating of JB Weld but what you have to watch with epoxy resin products is that as they cure they tend to go a bit runny and will start to run out or run unevenly all over where you don't want it. One of the benefits of using the 24 hour version of this epoxy resin, there's just no rush to apply it. You can take your time and make sure it gets into every nook and cranny of the damaged part. Very shortly I will be also using some JB Weld to repair the damage to the plates underneath the hull. And when I finally finish the job, I'll place the boat upside down on a stool in the workshop. So if any JB Weld runs anywhere, it's only going to run where the gravity takes it, and that of course is down. So I may find a couple of spots on the floor, but it's better than it running down into the inside of the bolt and looking unsightly. In this clip, I'm screwing in the 8BA bolt, and it has to be quite tight to hold this part together. And because this small steel bolt is made of stainless steel, it's never going to rust, and it's much stronger than a brass bolt. So I can really tighten it up to nip these parts together. And once that's done, I can spend some time tidying up the amount of JB Weld on the repair. Obviously, some JB Weld squeezed out on the inside and squeezed out on the outside. So I'm removing the excess JB Weld, but I'm not wasting it. I'm using it on the top of the combing to hide the bolt. And when this is all ground to shape and painted, only you and I will know that it's been repaired. And once again, the obvious advantage of this being the 24 hour curing version as opposed to the 5 minute epoxy is that you can work with it for quite a while until you get it just as you want it. The 5 minute version of epoxy resin from my experience doesn't seem to stick quite as well, but the main benefit is you can mess about with it for a while to get it just as you want it. No stress, no rush and no time constraints. If only other things in life were like this. I used to stress about a lot of things when I was younger, but now I'm older I fail to see the point. It's just a waste of time. 
With the JB weld nicely shaped around the bow area, as you can see from this clip, it's time to mix some more JB weld to fix the plates underneath the boat. There are two definite areas underneath the hull where the plates have lifted. This is the worst part near the stern. Using my small mahogany mixing stick, I'm packing as much JB weld into the gap as possible. And this is where the properties of epoxy resin can be useful. As I mentioned earlier, epoxy resin tends to spread as it cures. So hopefully this is going to spread even further into the gap in the hull. There's some more damage under the hull, but it's a lot less than the one at the stern. So I'm also treating this part of the hull to some JB Weld. If you've been watching this series, you will know that I've fully fiberglassed the inside of the hull. And to do this, I used two layers of glass fiber woven tape, so it's going to be very strong. But I don't want any water getting in between the plates and the glass fiber layer. Here I'm using my fingers to smooth out the JB Weld, and this is pretty stupid. I shouldn't use my fingers, and I should wear rubber gloves. But I do like to live life on the edge sometimes because it's the only excitement to get these days. And on that note I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.